Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkab SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices for Muslims by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Salik Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. My name is Mosin Shah and my co host is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. And let us uh, continue our discussion on wudu. Uh, my question is what is mustahab to do in wudu? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin Now the first mustahab with regard to the wudu and it's very important that we take this into consideration and that is to use a limited amount of water for the wudu and that is actually part of the avoiding the israf and tabdeer of the water to actually respect this ni'mah and grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, the amount of the recommended and mustahab for the wudu is um, as it's called the mud um, which is converted to the grams about 750 grams. So, uh, so, so that's roughly takriban 750 milliliters which is um, there's a small soft drink you can get in the bottle, 500 ml. It's that and a half, roughly. That's how much. Yes, roughly, almost. Yeah. Use. And with regard to, for example, the ghusl, um, taking a shower, which is for the mus- for the uh, wajib or mustahab uh, ghusl, um, that is actually three kilograms. Okay. Which is known as as sa. As sa, three liters. Um, yeah, roughly three kil- kilograms uh, oh. of water to wash. The hadith says from Imam Al-Baqir alayhi salam that he said كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله يغتسل بصاع the Holy Prophet used to wash and do the ghusl with صاع which is 3 kilograms من ماء ويتوضع بمد من ماء and he used to do the wudu with mud which is 750 grams so this is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa If we don't follow his sunnah, then we are actually doing something which does not please the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So we try to stick with um, respecting this grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the water. Hassan Shaykh, what about the whole uh, br- washing the mouth and the teeth, the brushing like that? Is this mustahab? Yes, one of the mustahabat of um, the wudu is brushing the teeth. Now, um, the best uh, method used and to be used for brushing the teeth is to use the, the siwak, which is a piece of wood uh, brought from a tree called Iraq. Mm-hmm. And um, if not, then with one's finger or with anything else, even the normal toothbrushes, um, just to make sure that uh, the, the one who wants to enter the salah and pray with a nice clean teeth and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So are you saying that when performing wudu we have to get a, a maswak, a swak stick and start exactly, brushing? Exactly, yes, you can get it from and that's, and that's part of the wudu, just to be brushing your teeth like with the maswak? Yes, I mean, um, before you start the wudu, for example, you do the siwak and oh. then you start the wudu afterwards. Oh, okay. If you forget to do the siwak, you do it after the wudu, mm. after, by, by the end of the wudu. So it's very important, it just makes your teeth uh, smell better, uh, brighter as well, those who mm-hmm. look for whitening their teeth. Mm-hmm. So that's a good opportunity for them to use this, uh, the specific siwak. Uh, and we have a hadith from mm-hmm. Sadiq alayhi salam. He says, وَعَلَيْكَ بِالسِّوَاكِ عَنْدَ كُلِّ وضوء. Make sure you use the siwak uh, before every uh, wudu mm-hmm. or while starting the wudu. So it's important, these are encouragements for the mu'min to actually um, uh, to be more c- um, in the side of cleanliness and tahara. And that's part of it. It's not just uh, to wash your face and, and, and rub your head and feet. It's actually also other segments of, of tahara uh, within the sharia. The other um, mustahab uh, before you actually enter the wudu is to wash both hands. So you wash uh-huh. both hands and then you start the wudu uh, onwards. Um, other mustahab is to rinse water inside your mouth okay. and breathe water um, and sniff inside your nose, both okay. nose. 
that could cause a bit of issues for some people because how far does the water need to go up? Just a bit. Because if it goes up bit. to here, no, no, that's, that's, it, it can cause that's discomfort. A, that's a bit harmful, yeah. No, it's just a bit, just a little sniff and then you bring it out the water again from uh, the nose and... Uh, so just, just a little bit, just, yeah, to just, go, to, just to go inside a little exactly, bit. Exactly, just to clean up, you know, if there's, if there's dust or something, mm -hmm. other particles. There's another mustahab with this regard and what that is saying Bismillah, a tasmiyah. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's mustahab to say in any act, in any uh, location, you get up, you stand up, you, you f open a book to read something, you buy something, you want to sell something, you say bismillah, it's mustahab, a general uh, mustahab in everything, but uh, it's been encouraged in, in, in wudu as well. So when you want to start to um, wash your face, you say bismillah, rahman, rahim, or bismillah. There's a hadith from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. He says, وَإِذَا سَمَّيْتَ فِي الْوُضُوءِ طَهُرَ جَسَدُكَ كُلُّهُ If you say Bismillah in the wudu, all your body will be purified. Oh, wow. So the whole body will be, be purified with the blessing of saying Bismillah. But, وَإِذَا لَمْ تُسَمِّ لَمْ يَطْهُرْ مِنْ جَسَدِكَ إِلَّا مَمَّرْ عَلَيْهِ الْمَاءِ and if you don't say Bismillah and you do the wudu, only the parts which were washed and wiped, they only became pure mm. on the whole body. Mm. So that's the credit you get by saying Bismillah, where all the body will be purified, inshallah. Um, another mustahab, uh, which you have to go back and refer in to the books of, of dua, uh, the dua and supplication of wudu. Mm -hmm. When you start, you, when you open the tap water, for example, when you uh, wash your face, these are all stages. There are specific du'a you have to read, mm -hmm. and they all mustahab. And you have to go, go back and refer back to the books of ad'iyah to find out uh, uh, these ad'iyah and supplications. Now, <clears throat> the other mustahab within the wudu as well is to actually to wash your face and both arms twice mm -hmm. because the first wash is a wajib okay you have to wash at least once mm -hmm. the face so you actually you pour the water from the top to bottom you wash it that's once and then again the second is mustahab the second is mustahab okay are you talking about a second wipe or wash, or second, like taking the water again and putting in additional it water on. It depends on your intention. What is okay. your intention? Is is this wipe or the first uh, water you have actually poured? Is it the first time? Mm -hmm. So if you count as a first, it becomes the first. And um, the second one, as Mustahab has mentioned, the third one is haram. Mm -hmm. You know, allowed to do the, th the third uh, yes. washing. So it's only the first or the second. And to have them both is, is good, it's mustahab. Um, and that also applies to both arms, the right yes. and the left arm. Again, once is the wajib one. Mm -hmm. The second wash is mustahab. The third is, should be avoided. Another mustahab, which is mentioned that to read Surat Al-Qadr. Okay. Al -Qadr. I'll just mention a hadith about this uh, reward about reading this verse inside or while doing the wudu. The hadith says, أَيُّمَا مُؤْمِنًا قَرَأَ فِي وُضُوءِهِ إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ Whoever reads the, the Surah Al-Qadr in his wudu, خَرَجَ مِنْ ذُنُوبِهِ كَيَامُ وَلَدَتُ أُمُّهُ He gets the reward as if somebody was just born oh, wow. where he has no sins. So all the sins will be wiped. MashaAllah. And that also supports, hadith supports the other hadith which says that uh, if somebody goes and he washes five times yeah. in a river mm -hmm. and then um, we'll at the end of the day he finds himself clean. Yes. So the process of wudu and salah, it's all to purify the ones, mm -hmm. uh, the internal and the external part of the body of, of the human being. Yeah. And that's what we need actually. We need to be purified all the time mm -hmm. because we are fallible and we are uh, exposed to sins, to yeah. mistakes and so forth. So one of the best ways is to uh, do the wudu, is to pray and stick with the prayer times. Mm -hmm. And um, 
also there is another mustahab within the wudu which the um, reading surat or ayat al-kursi okay another mustahab in the wudu ayat al-kursi in surat al-baqarah and um, of course reading these verses will give you a reward mm -hmm. the reward itself for the wudu that you do mustahab and the reward for reading these verses so you, you get multiple rewards for reading such uh, mustahabbat so it's it's nur ala nur as they say so That's it's fine. enlightenment over enlightenment very nice Sheikh. now now we've discussed the mustahabbat of the wudu is there any mistakes or anything that the viewers might do which is actually makru that they should stay away from this when doing wudu of course, the makruh is another issue uh, to be discussed as well. Um, we have things which are uh, disliked in Sharia, makruh, which means uh, that um, you won't go get the reward if you do them. I mean, um, there are things sometimes you get less reward. It depends on, on, the, act, okay. on the act, less reward, or you don't get anything out of it. And instead, it's something dislike, mm -hmm. disliked act. Um, the one, one of the makruhat is to ask somebody to help you to get the, the wudu uh, water, for example. Yes. So to pour the water in your hands and you do the wudu because ah, okay. you, you're not allowed to actually allow anybody else to so do the wudu. you're talking about seeking assistance in your wudu? In, in terms of uh, the basic ones, which means to pour the water inside your hand, not to actually assist you to do the rubbings and, and wipings and okay. so forth. It's just to, to get you uh, the, uh, the water, to rinse the water, for example. Um, not everything else, because it's not allowed. Uh, you know, I mean, you can't uh, just sit down and let your brother or, or son to wash your face and f wash your hands and, mm -hmm. and, and to wipe your uh, head and, and feet. You're not allowed, actually. But just to assist you, that is macro. The other macro is to actually to dry your hands and face after you finish the wudu with a napkin oh. or with a, with a towel. That's makruh as well. So you have to keep the situation of the wudu as it is. You, the wetness and the moisture of the wudu should stay as it is until you get to the uh, prayer mat and you start praying. That is what is desirable. So it's better to actually, once you perform the wudu, it's just... Keep it as it is. Put on your, right. If you have to put on a jacket or whatever, You're right. your hoodie, put it back on. But don't actually wipe and dry exactly. yourself. Exactly. exactly. Keep yourself moist and continue with the prayer. Exactly. The other makro within the wudu is to actually do the and perform the wudu in the, the place of najasa, which is the toilet. Another um, makro in the wudu is to actually use not the pure gold and silver utensils, okay. but to use the golden plated and silver plated utensils. Uh -huh. Because I've mentioned in the previous episode that to use um, mm. a golden plated um, a utensil, which is, for example, made out of, let's say, metal mm -hmm. or wood, and it's been polished and painted by gold, we are allowed to use them to eat, to drink, and so forth, and even for the wudu, but it is makruh. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the wudu, to use such utensils which are painted or polished by gold or, or silver, it's uh, actually uh, makruh. So, so you're talking about uh, taps or if there's like a, a cup or something to uh, pick the water up and pour exactly, it. Exactly, yeah, exactly. If these are made out of gold or silver exactly. or plated, this is makruh. Yes, stay away from yes. Asantam now. Uh, we've had some questions come in and um, one of the brothers was asking that what the mustahabat of wudu if you are performing wudu you're reciting uh, ayah of the Quran or you're reciting a surah of the Quran and somebody interrupts, asks you a question or something is it okay to stop reciting attend to the, to the um, brother that's asking or should you complete the ayat and then speak to the brother after? As you've just mentioned that it's mustahab. Mustahab means desirable. It's not wajib, obligatory. So while you're doing the wudu, 
um, and you're reading, let's say, Surah Al-Qadr or Ayat Al-Kursi, and somebody interrupts, yes, they can actually stop reading the rest of the ayah and respond to, uh, let's say, parents sometimes. Yeah, you have to stop respecting the parents' call. Um, and sometimes that's priority given to the parents to respond to, the, to, the, to their call. But in overall, if you could uh, finish off first this mustahab, finish off the ayah, which is only 5-10 seconds, it won't take that much. And then you go back to that person and you, you, you answer that person, it's, it's better. But anyway, it depends on the situations, how urgent they are. Asantum Shaykhna. Shaykhna, what about those people who are performing wudu, but they need to go to the toilet, but they're holding it. They say, oh, you know, I can hold it, let me perform wudu, quickly pray, then I can relieve myself later on. Is, is this acceptable? Well, this act is actually makruh and is disliked. The best thing is to, as I've mentioned last time, that uh, we need to actually be ready. We are meeting the Lord mm -hmm. of the world and uh, we stand before him with comfort, with, with humbleness, with respect. So we have to make sure be ready for it as we are ready before we go to college or school or work and so forth. We try to actually uh, at least try our best, at least for our own health, to abide with these rules. All their mustahab or makruh, we try to abide with them. And may Allah reward us in the hereafter and we gain uh, happiness in this world, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you very much, Shaykhna. And thank you to all the viewers that were joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the discussion and inshallah you'll be able to adopt the mustahabat in wudu. If you have any questions that you'd like to send in to the program, please send them to the contact details provided. And inshallah, I mean, the Sheikh will address those questions as soon as we can. Until next time, make sure you stay in with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.